Mandy Caldwell. Okay. I have, I have found you. Congratulations. <laughs> you are my people and I have found you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh lord i mean this semester continues to be just a ball of fun right you know so, mama's to spring break though so praise jesus hallelujah yay so tell me all about your week ma'am tell me about it it's not a whole lot of nothing that's um, good which i'm fine with yeah yeah Katie's going over to our show notes right now mm -hmm. because I literally have nothing, nothing under, under my section. Of Just notes. to remind me when I go write the actual show note, what yeah. to put in there that Mandy said. So tell me about it. Do okay. So if you don't have much, I you know the baseball uniform. I mean, you at least should have a a baseball we can, update. We cannot talk about the baseball pants. Okay not allowed oh, you well, okay. not talk about the baseball pants okay uh, you know i watched a lot of baseball um yeah. bandy boys uh oh, yes you're you posted yeah well yeah about ben bowden i love ben bowden yes um and he is so we started watching baseball again really when dansby was a junior at vandy mm. which was the year after they won the national championship my sister's like Vanderbilt's good we need to be paying attention so we started paying attention we started paying attention and so then um so we watched Dansby's junior season and then he got drafted by Arizona and I think at that point we started kind of paying attention to the Braves again and then the following years when Dansby got traded to the Braves and at that point we were all in so really since I've been back all in which was about 2017 2018 yeah on the Braves there's been a Vandy boy at least one Vandy boy on the team um and you know Dansby's gone Cal Wright's gone I'm still so, I'm I know you don't care as much about it but I am just as sad that Dansby's gone as I am that Freddie Freeman's gone. I will never be as sad about anything as I am that Freddie Freeman's gone. Yeah. Because Dansby wanted to, I mean, not that Dansby wanted to go, but Dansby made the choice. And Dansby. That is true. He, you know, he went and made a whole lot more bank. And he, you know, Freddie got yeah. screwed. Freddie got screwed. Freddie. I, I would use another word, but yes, you're right. Freddie got something. Freddie Freeman should have been a brave for life, and it is just criminal. Criminal. Fre he got bent over Ugh. and taken for a ride. But so our hope for Vandy boys on the Braves are Big Ben, who has been in Triple A, um, and then also Penn Murphy. So Penn Murphy has made it up, but Penn had. Um, Oh, no, no. It's spelled M-R-F-E-E. -E, Penn Murphy. Like me. Maybe I should marry Penn Murphy. Um, Wait, M what? M-U-R-F-E-E. -E, R-F-E-E. -E. I thought you said M-R-F-E-E. -E, and I was like, that's too many consonants in a row. I might have said that. I don't. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so those two boys and... Um, maybe in the bullpen they're they're our best hope of having some band i love it but it was fun that um so spencer jones is one of the yankees top prospects and he is a vandy boy and he love is a that. beautiful beautiful human being y'all he is a gorgeous child he is very tall and after one game um i want to say it was the stanford game um that they won like in a wall a uh, like a wild pitch i think it was a wild pitch walk off they took spencer's shirt off listen you know oh, but spencer I, had a spencer had a gigantic home run in a spring training it. game this week so that was fun um javier vaz who's with the royals made a fantastic catch 
Love that. Enrique Barfield, who just graduated last year, or not graduated, but got drafted last year. He's with the Orioles. He stole a base. Listen, there's Look boys at that. tearing it up. So it up. what are the actual, Van? how is the actual Vandy team doing? They're doing okay. They're, um, they've been having some Don't trouble with their bullpen. Oh, that's it's, bad. It's real. It's a group of really young kids. Um, and so hopefully they're going to be able to get it together before sec play um yeah they had a good game last night they played um can't remember the team it's from like middle of nowhere indiana but they're a great team they're good team. yeah they typically make uh the regionals and they beat vandy last year and yeah Vandy came out last night and put 20 and they were seven and zero coming into this vandy game vandy put up 20 runs against them last night goodness yeah so, um, one thing I have found, um, just as a college sports, um, fan is that while with football, you have like the big schools and then everybody else with a lot of other sports, especially with baseball, you can have, I mean, you can have a, a smaller school that has a really, that can compete with the big guys. So like you said, just because it was a little team from wherever, um, I think of Coastal Carolina. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so you, you we don't just worry about the other big teams and the big schools. You have to worry about your whole schedule. That's right. Yep. So, so but they're, I mean, they're good. There they're we good. go. Um, they've got some great freshmen, um, and then they've got some good guys that have returned. So it's fine. They're so good. y'all are ranked ninth, and you're five and three. Yep. Yep. In fact, and, I think they're playing in 20 minutes. Um, Auburn is ranked 23rd, and we're six and one. So Let's talk about some Auburn basketball, because I believe y'all are playing Tennessee tonight. We are, and I, I was going to mention y'all. that as well. I need y'all to take care of business. Look, I want to, you know, I want to really badly because, you know, an SEC win helps us in that tournament. Tennessee's real, real good this year. And so I don't like them either. It's the wrong orange. Bill Fulmer is a snitch and a cheat. I don't care what anybody says. I don't, I still don't like Phil Fulmer. But he's I, not as bad as their, listen, their current coach. Yeah. Oh, I know. We don't like him, even though he's good looking. We don't like him he's just because so they're good looking doesn't mean they're good people. Uh, but yeah, we play him tonight at seven. So I'll be watching that game at seven. They're in um, Knox Vegas. Y'all can't see my face, but I don't, I mean, I don't like, yeah, I'm not, I'm very hopeful, but Auburn as good as they are in basketball this year is so up and down. So and I don't know. It's clogged up at the top of the SEC there. They're all it is. Close. It is. Um well, thank you for that baseball update. Is that really all you've got for us this week? Are you that chill? I love that for you. Well, you know, there's lots of stuff going on that sure. you can talk about on the podcast. Right. Right. I feel you on that. <laughs> yeah well yeah so i know um so i did speaking of auburn basketball i watched um auburn beat georgia you're welcome um it's always a good day when auburn beats georgia in any sport in any way and anyhow we can do it we want to beat them um but let me tell you the sports broadcasters don't just love georgia and alabama football They love Georgia basketball. When I tell you those two men and I, they were on the SEC network and I couldn't ever figure out because I didn't watch the very, very beginning of the game. So I couldn't figure out who the commentators were because they never would put their names on the screen or show them. When I tell you when Georgia would like dunk or hit a, you know, great shot or whatever, when they hooped and hollered, (laughs) hooped and then they hollered about it. And then when Auburn would do something great, they would say, oh, that was a great shot. (laughs) Oh, boy. Okay. 
<laughs> I mean, literal hooping and hollering. Anyway, so the unfortunately, the sportscaster love for Auburn and Alabama, I mean, for all for Alabama and Georgia lives throughout the year. It does not just stop in January at the national championship game. I'm sorry. I was so mad. I was like, really, guys? Come on. I mean, yeah, it was a great shot, but hoot and holler for both of them or don't hoot and holler at all. Like, pick one. There you go. Just looking for some fairness here. Yes. Amen. Um, The other thing that I did this week, um, uh, I had um, a major procedure done on the scale of, um, you know, Katie wants a little sympathy in her life. <laughs> so I went to make it on Monday for just, I was there. It took me longer to drive there and back than it did to be there. And um, I had a skin tag like on my eyelid. Yeah, you, you were just starting to tell us about this last week yes. when the recording. When the recording stopped. Out. It was my, definitely my favorite way we've ever ended the podcast skin tag. talking about a skin tag for sure yeah well i mandy told me and some other people told me that anything on your face you always get a plastic surgeon to do and so i went to see my very good friend at renaissance plastic surgery if you ever need any you know want a little help um or need some reconstruction of some kind taylor mcclendon is the sweetest kindest prettiest boy but he is very young he and his wife are both good friends his in-laws are great friends his parents are great friends um so i went to see taylor and i walked in and he was like why are you here and i was like your mother-in-law said that if i didn't come get you to get this off she was going to be mad at me and so he looked at it and he actually numbed it so this is where it gets very harrowing y'all i mean this was major <laughs> this is major so he, I got a shot. He cut it off. He had to hold the cotton ball on that thing for like a minute. Yeah, to bleed, bleed, stop bleeding. Yeah. I came through. I survived. I'm really proud of you. No stitches. I'm really proud of you. I drove all the way home with numb eyelashes. I mean. Listen harrowing oh, the, the other thing i've been doing is i've been real steeped in some world war ii-ness so yeah this listen your bravery bravery valor Harrow. is really i'm feeling overwhelmed i feel so like i've been reading about a... the french resistance mm -hmm. and winston churchill you're yeah. right up there you're right up there let's get dug on my eyeball he looked at me okay so this is where i wanted to kill him uh, he looked at me when he was done and he said, are you driving home today? Cause it was about three. Cause the whole thing took 30 minutes from checking in to being done. Well, and, you should have just come down here and I'd have gotten my fingernail clippers after that thing. Well, I do that on the rest of, like I get them under my arms all the time. I, I cut them off, but so not gross. on my face. This is so gross. Anyway. I know. Anyway. So he looked at me and said, you look a little tired, Katie. Are you going to be okay to drive all that way home? And I said, you didn't pull tight enough is what you're telling me. <laughs> and he was like, what? and the nurse, I said, what you didn't you pull say? me tight enough. If I um, look tired, you didn't pull my face tight enough. I, I thought, thought the nurse said, was going to fall on the floor laughing. I thought you said pull toed. No. And I was going to have to get the interpretation of what 90 year old speak pull toed was. Pull tight enough. I was like, <laughs> you need to pull me a little tighter next time. If I look tired. What, right. Just That's string back problem. there and just yank me back. I said, that's, that's your fault, Mr. Plastic Surgeon. Yeah, exactly. Nobody should walk out of your office looking tired. I know. So she was died laughing and he was just rolled his eyes like, get out of here. I said, go home. So I texted his wife the next day. I said, I want you to tell Taylor I survived the night. <laughs> I'm not bleeding. My eyelashes are no longer numb. And she's like, good for you, ma'am. Good for you. So funny. So yeah, so I had that harrowing, harrowing I'm experience on my real proud of you. I mean, you should be. Um, and then what you know, I I I made no secret about it. We all have times where I was just, I have been very stressed out. School is no fun right now. 
life is not great. It's better now. I feel much better this week, but I think I'm perimenopause is messing with my sleep, which is never oh, good. I've decided that a uh, good time to wake up is four thirty. Yeah. It took three melatonin gummies last night for me to go to sleep. God. Three. I usually do like one or two. And at two o'clock, I was like, I got to have another one. <sighs> so um, I took a day. I took a reset day. And so Friday, I got tickets to the um, Atlanta Botanical Gardens. All the... Um, Little garden clubs up here in Atlanta do a little thing every year. And there were entries from literally all over the country. There were some entries from Hawaii, you know, of cuttings and flowers. And just about to ask, how do you transport that? I don't know. What do they bring? Um, there were some, (laughs) yeah, some orchid, gorgeous orchids. Can you imagine? Can you, I feel like there's been a movie about this, like people who are really into orchids. Yeah. Can you imagine the stress of them transporting the Uh, orchids from Hawaii to Atlanta? They had a really big bank of camellias. Pretty. So there were plenty of camellias to to be awarded. And um, there was one I had never seen before. So that was real pretty. Oh, there was one you had never seen before. Well, you know, <laughs> look, am I an old lady? Yes, I am. I own it. May, so my great grandfather was friends with a guy that grew and cultivated his own varieties of camellias. So their yard was full of camellias. And um, we have gotten some of them. My nephew loves to plant them because they're down by Massey Lane Gardens. And if you're in Georgia, never been to Massey Lane, you need to go. It's a camellia garden down in Marshallville. Um, So I know, look, I can't grow anything, but I can admire things. And I know camellia varieties. And I knew almost like that's a Dr. Hauser. Oh, Lord, Katie. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I was able to send Wilson, my nephew, a bunch of pictures, which was great because I hadn't really talked to him much lately. So I was like, look what I'm getting to do. Aren't you jealous? And he's like, sure. <laughs> Teenage boy, you know. He did say they were cool. He said I was cool. Good job. Look at that. Good job. Way to go. Um, so they had some arrangements. They had some cut flowers and they had a whole horticulture thing of people entering their you know, own personal plants and being judged on them. It was really neat. So I did that. Good. That's fine. And then I went to my, one of my favorite museums, Scadfash has a new Balenciaga exhibit. And look, that man, he worked from like the forties to the sixties. And my favorite thing that he did was capes. He could make a cape. Like, I feel like I need a cape in my life. Not a coat, but a cape. Okay. So uh, I okay. will make sure I'll make sure to post uh, to send Mandy some pictures so she can post them. It was fantastic. It just, you know, the, the needle work, it, it just makes me happy to see good craftsmanship and pretty things. And so it was a great day. And okay. then I went to South city kitchen and had uh, a great lunch. Um, I had a great waitress, which was so nice. I texted Mandy. I think I texted you. I was sitting next to a guy that ordered the same thing I did, which was a lovely um, short rib sandwich. And he told the waitress, he was like, I think I need a box. And I wanted to turn to the right and just call him a quitter. Cause it's <laughs> not that big of a sandwich, like quitter, but I didn't. So I just, I had my little, it it was a lovely lunch and it was nice. And then I went to Whole Foods and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I'm, I'm a convert now. That place is evil. It will suck all the life out of my wallet and I'm just going to have to figure out a way to pay for it because it's fantastic. I told you all the cheap ways. And, And I did all that. I did. I did. I scanned my thing. I went through it. I'm, I, I did it. I got only things, only cheeses that were on sale. 
So hey, you did good. I, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. And I didn't get that much. But let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any gentlemen listening, that's Chantilly cake that Mandy talked about. She wasn't lying. Not that I thought she was, but holy moly. Like that's not typically a cake I would be attracted oh. to. It's really good. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. So um, thank you, Mandy, for that part of my reset day. But it just, I feel so much better about life. Good. Like, there is hope in the world. Right. And there's life outside of Candler. And I'm going to be fine. I'm going to pass my classes and be fine. You are. Yeah, I'll be fine. Um. So I highly recommend if you're in Atlanta, Atlanta Botanical Gardens is a beautiful place. Any time of year, they have always something blooming and a lot of great places to walk around. Anyway, love it. So highly recommend. The other thing I thought I would talk about, um, because you and I have talked, I think, outside of here about a couple of these, is this weekend is Oscars weekend. And I have not, I did not, first of all, I forgot how many movies they nominate for Best Picture. I mean, I have typed out the list and it is very long and I've only maybe seen half of them. I mean, what happened to when it used to be like four or five? Right. Now we have 10. So the ones that I have, I have seen are Barbie. I watched Oppenheimer today while I was writing a midterm. Um, The Holdovers, which I know I've talked about on here, which I loved very much. Killers of the Flower Moon, I have seen. And then Maestro. Of those, I liked Barbie and The Holdovers the best. Yeah, I saw Barbie. Uh Uh-huh. And about an hour of Killers of the Flower Moon. And then I got bored. Yeah, I I will say Lily does a really good job in her role, but outside of her, it's not Plus, I started watching it after, I think I'm mad at Jason Isbell, so I didn't. Yeah, he's in it, yeah. That joy had left me. Um, And I did watch Maestro, and I freaking love Lenny Bernstein, love him, Um, but that movie was just okay. Like, if you don't love him, if you don't love him, I wouldn't watch it. It, I will agree that it was just okay. I don't think he should have directed it. I think a lot was lost in him trying to do everything. I just didn't love it. I wanted to love it, but I did not love it. Um, the all so the other ones that I have not seen are American Fiction, which I want to see. Anatomy of a Fall, which I have no idea what that is. Past Lives, no idea. That's Poor that things. weird one with um oh who is the redhead in the um La La Land? That's Poor Things. Oh, okay. Then Which does not look like it. yeah, that doesn't look like my kind of movie. It's I've heard from, it's weird. Yeah. People like Dax and Monica loved it. I've um, seen some clips and it's just weird. Yeah. Like the, the whole concept that she's a baby yeah. in an adult body. That's got to be weird. And I love Mark Ruffalo, but his accent, just in the clips that I've seen, his going in and out of a British accent just annoys the crap out of me. And I love him. Uh, Willem Dafoe is good, but he's got those weird prosthetics on his face for this movie. I don't know. And then the last one is The Zone of Interest, and I had never heard of that me either yeah i don't uh american fiction is about the only one of those i even want to see yeah i i'm i'm with you on that i think so and i might try to watch it before saturday i probably won't who we kidding Uh, but that is this weekend so i'll be interested to see i will say the one the one person that keeps winning that i am very glad keeps winning is divine from the holdovers she is fabulous in that movie and if you haven't seen it i highly recommend it paul giamani divine i butcher her name every time i say it so i'm just gonna stick with divine and then this unknown actor plays the little 18 year old student 
that gets held over for Christmas. So highly recommend. Um, there's not much of an Olympic week coming up, but our one Olympic moment is y'all we're six months out, six months from this week. Woohoo! I'm so excited. So Come on. it'll be good. It's gonna be fun. It will be. All right, Mandy, it is your week for food. And I can sense a theme just by the show notes. <laughs> oh yeah. And I can't wait to hear about all this. So I think I've talked about Rancho Gordo beans before. They're yeah, an heirloom bean company. I love that. Them. And they are so good. Um, and as we talked about last week, I was like trying to get more fiber because Dr. Mary Claire says we should have more fiber as part of menopause. And it's starting to get hot. And beans are very much a cold weather food to me. Don't yeah. ask me why, but they are. So I thought, well, I need to make some beans before it gets hot. So I made a big pot of the Rancho Gordo white beans. And I've linked to the specific ones I get from them. And they're teeny little white beans. And they are so good, y'all. They get so creamy and just delicious. And you don't have to soak them. Um, they, you can, but you don't have to. Um, so you don't have to go through all this rigmarole. You can just cook them. Um, but so I had a big pot of beans and so I wanted to, um, share a couple of my favorite recipes that involve white beans. The first one is roasted white beans and broccoli, which sounds so weird. And the first time I ever made it, I was like, what? But the woman shutter, it's a recipe from shutter bean. Um, okay. and I trust her. So I made it, I want to say I started making it maybe during COVID and I had not made it in a long time and it's just so good and it's so healthy and it's like just on a sheet pan white beans and broccoli and lemon and parmesan cheese and you can put an egg on it whatever but it's just so do it, you cook the beans first yeah so that's why I out of your beans. white pot of your pot of white beans yeah and if you don't want to cook your white beans you just throw a can of white beans um, from the pantry so it's a great you know easy sort of weeknight okay. or another meal too, too um so highly recommend that and then the other one is um allison roman if y'all don't follow allison roman i love allison roman Let she um, she was a she was a new york times writer she, i think she was with bon appetit before that she may have been at bon appetit in the midst of all that craziness that went on um, but then she went to the New York Times and then she gave an interview and she sort of got canceled, but she's apologized for the stupid things she said in the interview. So she has made this comeback with her, um, her sub stack and she also does videos as part of it. And she's just super cool and great flavors. And she had a couple of viral recipes right at the beginning of the pandemic too, like that everybody was making, um, but anyway, she has, it's a <laughs> pot of brothy beans. Um, and so she kind of tells you how to cook the white beans and then all the different things you can do with them. Um, but so awesome. what, what I did with mine is I had a loaf of the delicious Black Bear Bakery sourdough. And so I just you toasted up a big piece of bread. Talk about bravery. You cut it and everything. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, and then sauteed some kale and then just used some of that broth from those brothy beans and mm. ladled all that in together with the kale and the beans and put that over the toast. Love. Delicious. So anyway, and she the is on before it gets hot. Insta, just all one word, her first and last name. So I just found her and followed her because Mandy said so. You should follow Shutter Bean too. Oh, oh, hold on. Shutter Bean. Yep. Um, okay. So I'm not a huge, there she is. Her name's Tracy Benjamin. Follow. Um, bean fan, but I think I would like these. Because I like butter peas, not butter beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are like teeny nanny little white beans. Argentine. Not even as big as like cannellini beans. Okay. Because 
we go used to make art what she called argentina peas i don't know why she called them argentina peas but she did they're kind of like little green field peas that she used to get at uh, the farmer's market that were so good and i love those i mean really love them and so i think this will that's this seems like the size maybe of that so i'm definitely gonna order they're bigger than a field pea but they're not as big as a cannellini bean <laughs> okay i'm gonna order some of your beans i'm gonna try them they're delicious we're gonna do this ma'am because everything you tell me to do i do listen and life is better for it <laughs> So I have uh, some favorites for the week and I cannot believe that you have, maybe I'm going to tell you something new that you don't know. No, I started to talk about this and then I saw you had it. On okay. The, not okay. the first thing, the second thing. I know. I wondered if I was going to steal it from you. you did. Well, I was going to talk about, uh, well, I'll talk about it when you. Yes. Okay. But so the, the, first, first, the thing, first thing I have not heard about. Oh, it's so good. Okay. So on Apple TV, which is where I'm watching all the World War II things right now. Masters of the Air, which, by the way, this is not. There were prisoner of war camps in World War II. So I'm not going to spoil anything major because I won't say who. But if you watch the last episode. Just, sh no, don't say anything. Move on. Well, I believe that. That would spoil it for me. So don't say it. Okay. When you watch it, text me because I want to tell I you something. I already have watched it. I don't want you spoiling it for everybody else because what you've already said. Because when the when it happened, I kept thinking, no. Well, I'm not going to say a name. Well, just the fact that what you've already said. Uh, because I'm well, sorry, suspicious of it. So don't say anymore. Uh, <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> it was Morris's. <laughs> so I'm a weepy mess just from that. Yeah. And I'm, I shouldn't be watching anything else about, more about World War II stuff. However... I finished one World War II book and immediately went and bought another one. However, A New Look is about Christian Dior and Coco Chanel during and after World War II. This is that what they kept advertising that I kept. Yes. Okay. And it is gotcha. so good. And it is about the fashion industry, which you know I love anyway. But what it has ended up being is more about how they help their siblings through the war. So I don't know how much history of Dior and Coco Chanel you know. But they both had siblings that did things in the war. And how they handled that was very different. And the ramifications of that and who succeeded and who did not after afterward in the fashion industry and who was innovative and who was ridiculed all the things the cast is so good so um let's see i had it pulled up a second ago um Maisie williams plays um catherine dior that's Christian's Arya sister yep who i was about to say that's you know um game of thrones and she is fantastic. Um, Juliette Binoche plays Coco Chanel, and she is amazing. John Malkovich plays, um, and I didn't know much about this um, fashion designer, but Lucien Leon, Leon um, who hires Christian Dior originally. Um, Sorry, I just it is it's just so good. It's so good. Watch it. When you said John Malkovich, it made me think of John Lithgow, who played Winston Churchill in um, The Crown. Did you know Winston Churchill was five foot six? No, because you know who plays him in The Crown is John Lithgow, and he's tall. I just said that. I know, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but he's hunched over. Winston Churchill it was doesn't five matter. foot six. So was, I'm reading this Eric Carl book that's about Winston Churchill, and they were talking about one of his deputies who was five foot nine, three inches taller than Churchill. I was like, what? Is he five foot six? I should have gotten wild? somebody shorter to play him. I mean, maybe he wasn't quite that short, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, no, you're good. You're good. So, a new look 
if you're into the World War II, watch it. <laughs> Which is apparently our current theme of consumption. Very dramatical. And I, I did not know a lot of this stuff about these designers. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> Will it's gave me a book really for Christmas about Madame Flacon, who was the leader of one of the biggest French resistance organizations. Mm. She worked with MI6 all mm -hmm. through the war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I read that over the weekend and then immediately had to buy a book about Winston Churchill after I read that. So. I love it. But I didn't know, like, the whole French resistance. Like, I mean, I know I learned about World War II. Yeah. Like, not like, either I wasn't that yeah. interested, it wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Or, like, I know, you know, Band of Brothers and the American right, Forces. Right, 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 right. Like, right. I know all that. But, like, the French resistance, I didn't have any clue. And I don't even think I really realized that the French government reached an armistice with hitler like pretty early on yeah that's just wild i know and it i mean it was definitely harrowing kind of like england was a, what now kind of like your skin tag i know right exactly like that same thing um england was a terrible place to be because they were being bombed all the time but those people had nazis walking up and down their streets there, and, I mean, the government was yes, like they were governed by the yes, Nazis. yeah. So uh, it, and so that's where this the new look you're really gonna like it because it looks at that very closely. Yeah. And like, what would you have tried to serve? Like, what would you have done? Like, I don't. It anyway. It's very good. I highly recommend. It's on Apple TV um not the whole thing is not out yet so you can catch up highly recommend okay good there is a new podcast by mandy's favorite i'll let her claim her fully since she has <laughs> met her in person Why? um her name is deb and she does the smitten kitchen so smitten kitchen has a new podcast called the recipe and Kenji, I have made some of his stuff before. I think we've talked about it on here before. So we okay. like him too. And okay. I liked um it. What what did you think about the premise, Mandy? I thought it was great. And it's so fitting for the both of them because they're both like part of why I like to make their recipes is because I know they are so thoroughly tested. Right. That you're not gonna get screwed if you make one of their recipes because they right. have tested them and tested them and tested them. Uh, what I was originally going to talk about was that when they talked about the fact that you're either an ingredients household. Yes. I love that. <laughs> or not like that explains why my friends look at my refrigerator and go, you have nothing to eat. You have nothing to eat. Yeah. But yeah. I know you could go in there and make 16 things yes. and I go to their house and they literally have nothing to eat. Their yes. refrigerators are literally empty. Yeah. And I'm like, I yeah that's, that's the difference yep i did that today there was nothing already made in my refrigerator for lunch today um outside of what like i've got to take with me to school this week and i was like i have nothing to eat and i went no i don't i've got so much food in this house so i made um tuna salad i mean that's she dad was the example she gave is that she that they that, so they were doing a mac and cheese <laughs> recipe uh-huh she was talking about how the craft blue box macaroni and cheese was always a special treat at their house. Because, I never had it. Because her mother was like, well, I didn't like cheese as a child. Um, yeah, I was that kid. Uh, but she was like, my mom would be like, we got butter, we got cheese, and we got noodles. You can make macaroni and cheese. So, but that's exactly, I mean, that's how I operate all the time. I buy whatever's on sale yeah. at the grocery store, as we have discussed. Yeah. And then I just, my sister's always like, how do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. I couldn't, I probably couldn't do it if I lived with other people who had opinions about things, but <laughs> I'm happy to eat beans yeah. on toast with some kale. There we go. And I, yes, I, I related to that too. You know, there was never boxes of anything. Well, I'm struggling right now because I was supposed to go to Nashville yesterday and so so you didn't get i don't i'm like but i'm not buying groceries because i'm going to nashville at some point i don't yeah. know when but it could be tomorrow so i'm not buying any groceries yeah 
I'm totally doing that thing right now where I'm like, oh, we're going to figure it out. Yep. Um, so the premise of the podcast is that they each so this first episode was stovetop mac and cheese. And so they each came up with a recipe and then they swapped them and they made each other's recipe and gave each other feedback on it. I loved that idea. I thought that was a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I thought it was fun. Yeah. I think, and that's, you know, both and totally the in your wheelhouse. Yeah. The debate of, um, well, when I did it this way, the powder wasn't like, I didn't like the creamy version of the box. I just like the regular, all those things. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Was both great. of them are like total food, food nerds. So it'll be fun. Yep. So the recipe is the name of it. So um, one of our very first episodes when I had my favorite things, I was, I've told you all about a book called Hello Beautiful, which I still say is such a great book and I highly recommend. The same author has come out with a new book called Hello Edward. And it is very, this is probably why I needed a reset day. <laughs> it's very sad. No, oh, no. But it's very good. So okay. you find out, or I mean, you find out if you read the dust jacket that there's a plane crash and there's only one survivor and it's a kid named Edward. And it goes back and forth with everybody on the plane to the aftermath. Yeah, we need to lighten up in our consumption. I know, right? I know, right? So I took only a couple wrong, nights off of that time. too. Only rom-coms from here on out. Shoo. It's very good though. It's just like Kelly Beautiful. It's very beautifully written, but it's a, oh, it's, it's a lot, but I recommend Hello, Hello Beautiful. You know, I read a book and it falls right out of my head. That was the one about the sisters. That was the retelling of little women from the eighties. Like Chicago basketball. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah what, the, basketball. the boy okay. was a basketball player. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, the other thing that's on my favorites that I mentioned um, on about my day was I, I have fallen head over heels in love with the cheese section at Whole Foods. <laughs> so Mandy mentioned last in her list that the Parmesan when it goes on sale, get it. And now I know why, because I saw it and I saw the regular price, but I wanted to buy the whole display case of it. I resisted. So I went around the edge of the hot food, which you, I mean, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. I'm going to have to go back and do a whole peruse through the warm food that you can put and take home for dinner thing wow but the cheese section so i just went through and i thought okay what's on sale and i found this dutch cheese and i'll type it out if because i don't know if every whole foods has the same selection i am i am totally smitten with this cheese <laughs> And I, I got that one and I got a um, English sharp cheddar and they're both so sharp that they're crunchy and it makes me so happy. Well, good, Katie. I'm so glad. Gosh, Mandy. They you were found this fulfillment in your life. Gosh. The other thing I got too, besides the cake and the cheese, I got those waffles that you told us about and I highly recommend. So I do grit, cheese grits with slow roasted tomatoes on Saturday. I'm very easy to kill because I'm so routine oriented. <laughs> That's my Saturday breakfast. So now for my Sunday breakfast, I have gotten some frozen raspberries and I'm going to put those on top of some of those little sweetened waffles. And I'm going to be the happiest girl on this planet on Sunday. Nice talking. Yeah. Some nice talking. Yeah. I can't wait. So if there's a Whole Foods near you and you haven't been, don't go if you don't want to like be like overwhelmed and attached for the rest of your life. 
I remember the first time I ever walked in a Whole Foods. Oh it wasn't even, if it came a Whole Foods later, it was called, it wasn't Bread and Circus. There was some other, it was in D.C., it was in Georgetown, and it was some other small grocery store that eventually got purchased by Whole Foods. Yeah. But, like, I literally can remember walking through the produce section being like, oh. Yeah. It, it, and mind you, I was making $19,500 a year, so I right. couldn't afford to buy anything. I put it all on my credit card, as all Good Hill staffers do. Put of your course. groceries on your credit card, along with your dry cleaning. Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, it, it, it was magical. It was almost like the first time I went to the Cab Farmer's Market. Yeah. It's magical. It's nice talking. Now, I don't go in person, which is what saves me because I'm not driving to Destin, right. especially, you know, for the next three weeks, I might drive over there. But after that, it's not happening. Yeah. yeah. So I pay. Let me tell you what happened last time I did a Whole Foods order. It was a rainy Saturday. It was my birthday and it was rainy and I ordered all those desserts and some yep. other things. And... <laughs> First of all, the woman pulled up and immediately sends me a text. There's nowhere to park. That is solidly your problem, yeah. not my problem. Not I have paid problem. and tipped you. So you figure it out. But I was nice and I said, you can just pull up in the space right in front of the little lobby area. It's fine. Well, then she, it was a solid 20 minutes later before I heard from her again, at which point she said, the elevator's not working. Yeah, I know that too. And again, that's Not, a huge problem. Yeah. But because I am who I am, I said, I know. Do you need help? Yes, please. So I get down there and it's a woman who's probably I would have taken her 15 years off. older than us. Listen, I was just like, just put, just leave the bags right here. I will get that. And then I promptly went in and deleted her tip. Because, there we go. I'm sorry. If you have to make two trips up the stairs to leave my groceries, then you should make two trips up the stairs to leave my groceries. I agree. Could I be more bougie? Could I be more bougie? Only if you went to a plastic surgeon to have a skin <laughs> tag removed off your eyeball. It's awful. I'm the princess level is awful. really high. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. Lordy. So I'm hooked. I'm hooked. Well, good. Good. So I think now what I'm going to do, because I got to make a Trader Joe's run, because I'm out of a couple things. I think on Tuesdays, I, this is how easily killable I am. I'm going to schedule when I go to each grocery store. This is our scintillating content for the week. is World War II and Katie's grocery store schedule. What Tuesday, more could I want? I know, right? I think I'm going to make... Either Tuesday or Thursday, one of them's going to be a Whole Foods day, one of them's going to be a Trader Joe's day. Because I'm not at the level yet where I can just do the order. Like, there's so much more than I, I was so overwhelmed by the loveliness that was Whole Foods. See, that, that's where you get in trouble, though. Because you get in there and you start walking around and you yeah. start getting a bunch of stuff you don't need. If you get the app and you just look at what's on sale. Which I had that with me and I was looking. You won't, you won't get off track. I'm just sharing my, my tricks know. with the trade because it is my hobby. <laughs> I think next time I am going to peruse the hot meals. Do you get those at all? You don't? It's too expensive. The, okay. Well, maybe I just won't. But the bakery was like heaven. And the cheese section. And I didn't even look at the wine because I had a bottle of wine here already. And so I just, I was like, that's why I've got to go back because I blocked out some sections because I knew if I did, I would have like three buggies full. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear yeah. you. Well, what's going on this week other than Tuesday or Thursday Trader Joe's Whole Foods? We got that part. What else is happening? Um, I turned in a midterm today. Congratulations, ma'am. I've got another assignment I got to do that it's one that just pisses me off. So I'm going to be pissed off tonight as I watch the Tennessee basketball game. Tennessee Auburn. Um, I may go try to see a friend of mine. She's coaching um, soccer and she texted me from the sidelines and she said, I think they're going to fire me. I think I'm yelling too much. 
to which I promptly said, I have to see this in person. <laughs> so uh, I may go do that and watch her coach. Not that her kids are playing. I just want to watch her lose her ever loving mind. Yeah. Or her shit. Either way. I forget we can cuss <laughs> on here. I want to watch her lose it. I do. Um, so I may do that. Other than that, um, not much this week. Next week is the week before spring break. So it'll be full of more midterms and junk like that. So studying, reading about Jesus. At a girl. At a girl. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I hope it's a good week. Um, I did book, and we'll talk about it for my spring break. I did book um, something nice for myself at the end of the week. Good. Good. Yay. What about you? What are you doing? I don't, my life is not my own right now. So I really okay. have no <laughs> Well, I hope that wherever you go, oh, you know what else we haven't talked about? Y'all need to be, uh, we need everybody to go follow True South TV and tell them that you told us we, um, we sent them because my goal in life is to have them do PR on our podcast. Have them do Oh, like come on and be interviewed. Oh. They're in Texas right now. So I don't know. You know, we last time they were, we knew they were filming or scouting. We sent out some reconnaissance. Oh, William. So we got to keep an eye on it to see if they actually come back and film. Did you hear Tell that? Me. I did. Tell us. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It's not even spring oh. break yet. Love that. Love that. Love that for I you. Don't. I don't. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right well y'all have a great week thanks everybody yes um birch and brooker we love you go order some beans <laughs> i gotta find where the button is sorry 